quite challenging in a short amount of time to scanning through all those. So, hello everyone. Welcome to week 9, still in Delft, at my friend's place. And you can see some footage that will be linked to a separate video below of the GoPro that I picked from the different places. We, I traveled inside Delft, writing a new kind of, I mean like, it will be also similar to the literature survey but i'll be starting this article this week so it will be like mapping the theory of collaboration that i'm looking into investigating into the practical aspects of collaboration this week i'm going to talk about a meeting from zoid zoid is actually a research center a, like a school or a university near our university where they also use technology enhanced learning research they collaborate with our university so what happened was there was one of my colleague who was very generous enough to set up a contact with another colleague in Zoid she works on similar project that I'm doing that is on collaboration but her work is mostly an interprofessional collaboration so it's like detecting collaboration in indicators in healthcare. So it's much different. To be more specific, she's working from a pedagogical perspective to formulate an assessment criteria for rating interprofessional communication during group work in healthcare. So what we did was because of my colleague, which I mentioned earlier, his name is Marcel and probably you'll see him in future videos if he agrees to come to give you some advice in the form of an interview session. So what we saw when I interacted with her, that it was really interesting because although her research is on collaboration, but her main focus is completely different than mine, but still we have a common ground, very common point, which is like we, can I mean like update each other uh, something which will be really helpful for me uh, I mean like we can update each other because when she forms the assessment criteria then she will need the collaboration indicators may it be in different domain like healthcare so in that situation I might find some help like how is she coming up with a measurable metric which can uh, detect, measure and rate collaboration. I am also struggling with that point now. Although I need to focus on a particular scenario of collaboration for which I am collaborating with Zoid and TU Delft uh, where I did my masters before. I mentioned about this collaboration with TU Delft which is expected, not sure till now in my last video. So if you have not checked week 8 video then you should go I'll attach a link below. I have a literature survey, which I mentioned few weeks back. I submitted for a conference. I think it was around week five or six. So you should check my week five or week six videos to know more about it. But that is more from a practical or implementation perspective. So it's like we detect the indicators of collaboration based on the practical works that use some kind of sensors to detect the indicators of collaboration, something like Suppose you are in a meeting, the sensor is detecting how much amount of time you are speaking or how often you interrupt, something like that. But you need a theoretical perspective or a theoretical, uh, I mean like a theoretical uh, underpinning for your uh, practical things when you write a literature survey, which makes it really solid or concrete. So coming from the, uh, I mean like a top down approach and a bottom up approach, if you combine both like the map, the theory to the practical, then it makes a lot of sense. So that is the reason I started working on mapping the theory to the practical thing for the literature survey because we have a very interesting conference coming up that is called the CSCL conference, Computer Supported Collaborative Learning. 
which is really my community out there. So I'm trying to make this paper ready uh, by that uh, for that conference, which deadline is approximately like three weeks after this day. So I know it is pretty ambitious to think about submitting something like this. Uh, but this uh, I'm going to describe now the plan, how I'm going to proceed with this. So that is the actually the tip of the week, like how in a short time you can manage to, uh, I, I mean, I don't know if I'll manage because I discussed with my supervisors and they mentioned that it's very ambitious. Although the plan sounds very promising, had you been given more time, you would have easily done it. So I would say like what they suggested is you should look for I mean like you should proceed with it you should not give up but after a certain point of time you need to reevaluate whether you will be able to make it to the deadline or not so based on that you need to take decisions decision is always yours that's what they are here to give you advice they are not here to implement something you should always take care of this that is the role of a supervisor beside the target proceedings in my case it is CSCL which is easily available in the internet and then quickly go to the bibliography database of your university and then scan through different proceedings in those years uh, so the thing is that you need to decide the threshold limit that is whether you want last 10 proceedings or 5 proceedings because each proceeding might have like 100 to 200 papers so it's quite challenging in a short amount of time to scanning through all those so what happens is what I did was I uh, this conference actually takes place every two years so I scanned last 10 proceedings although I need to reduce it later so that that's the thing like you cannot know beforehand whether you need 5 or 10 proceedings but you need to I mean like download more so later you can throw away a bunch of them and that decision also depends on how many papers you want to include in your uh, set of papers that you consider for writing a literature survey. So suppose say you want to include 100 to 150 or I don't know like 150 to 200 papers or maybe less than 100. So depending on that you need to justify in your paper like I chose this much proceedings from this year to this year because of xyz reasons and then you need to cut off like decide that threshold and go with go ahead with whatever you have so that will in a way decide the number of years so first i downloaded 10 proceedings but depending on how my scanning goes i will reduce it maybe to five or maybe i'll go with the 10 which is really ambitious but the main thing is that uh once you have this proceedings so you need to start scanning so for scanning the best tip which i got from some of my uh, seniors senior colleagues or maybe who have more experience and also based on my personal experience is that you need to uh, really look into your focus of your research and then decide based on the index scan through the index of each proceeding and highlight the main papers that are really relevant for your work and then you dig deep into the abstract and the conclusion or the discussion section to decide uh, which proceedings you really want to include uh, that that's your choice and this will help you i don't know how much time it will take you need to be a really quick reader so that is quick reading tip is to read through the abstract and then read through the discussion or the conclusion. So mostly you can eliminate some papers by only reading the abstract where you are sure although the title made sense, but from the abstract, you already know that this is not relevant for you. And sometimes after reading the abstract, you are really interested and you go into the discussion or the conclusion and then you decide, okay, I need to keep this, that or not, or maybe you will reject it. So in that way, you have to scan through each proceedings and decide the threshold and then decide how many proceedings you want to include. So that's very important to decide. And uh, you'll know in the coming weeks, obviously, whether I managed to 
submit for this conference or not uh, because I am really busy but still I am making this videos because I want to help you guys out there uh, to see how a PhD life goes that was main objective of this channel uh, so that's the reason I always uh, uh, plead everyone to subscribe but you don't know it depends how people like it because this is not this is like a small niche of group so it depends if people like it and obviously they'll subscribe see you guys in week 10 till then bye